Hi, Chris Morano here, Clear Path Herbals. Beautiful, hot July 25th, Saturday. And I'm standing next to Marshmallow, or Mallow. Um, its scientific name is Althea officinalis. Like Althea, like that old Grateful Dead song. The medicine is throughout the entirety of the plant very beautiful with picking this plant right now because it's prime time. Notice the beauty of the flowers, how soft they are. If you were here right now, we'd be picking off one and smelling it and tasting it. And what you'll immediately recognize is that this plant flower is tasty, bland, and mucilaginous, slimy. That's the medicine. We come over to the leaf again look how soft and delicate this leaf is feels as soft even softer than the mullen and if you flip it over notice how it has this whitish tint to it and the flowers are predominantly white with a little bit of a pink undertone but again the leaf very soft and if you were to take a bite of this once again starts off as being cottony in the mouth but quickly turns to a mucilaginous goop. So mucilaginous, slimy. And if we travel down the stem, we notice again that it always has this whitish undertone and the stem itself also is soft to the touch. And the predominant medicine is the root. This is a perennial. And uh, it likes to grow in damp areas. This is its favorite part of the garden because it's the dampest part of the garden. If you just look right over to your right here, there's this patch of sweet grass that looks decidedly different than the grass around it. it has a yellower tint to it. And that also loves to grow in very damp surroundings. The damper, the better. So we put the marshmallow and the sweet grass together here from other parts of the garden It quickly established and this is their happiest place. So this root, is the medicine we would be taking. Of course, you can't see it under the ground. We are picking this in the fall or the spring. Preferred time to get the root is somewhere between years three and four. Um, again, the root is large and it's very mucilaginous. So we take the root and we dry it and we use it for tea, but the tea is more like a goop or a gruel if anybody's ever had slippery elm gruel, you know that when you mix it with the hot water, it immediately starts to gel up and it becomes this gelatinous concoction that you can more eat with a spoon almost than with drinking it out of a cup. It depends on how much water and how much of the root you're using. The slippery elm bark though is part of the elm family and slippery and the elm family is um, seriously threatened because of um, a blight and this has been going on for over a hundred years and slippery elm may not be as deeply affected as the stately American elm but it is hard to get this medicine and not be concerned about the uh, the uh, health of the species and the population plus you're taking bark from a tree it means you're injuring the tree, which has a multiple year lifespan. And if you're not careful and you girdle the tree, take the bark all the way around the circumference, then you've effectively killed the tree. This medicine, it's a perennial, it spreads. I can grab this root medicine and get the majority of the medicine I was hoping to get from Slippery Elm, which is very nutritive. It's mucilaginousness means that it is loaded with these polysaccharides or these very nutritious long chain carbohydrates that in addition to being deep nutrition, easily assimilated nutrition, they're also really healing and protecting and soothing to mucous membrane tissue. The whitish coloration is an indication that the plant has an affinity for helping mucous membrane tissue, which is running through the respiratory system, sinuses, lungs, throat, the digestive system from mouth, stomach, intestines, colon, 
and also the genitourinary system, the bladder, the kidneys, the urinary system. And I use it in all three, especially when the person's mucous membranes are hot, irritated, inflamed, um, or atrophied, dried out, feeling like they're under-functioning. Even the skin, you can use this as an emollient, but more deeply for the intestines and the lungs and the urinary system. If I feel that they're having any kind of itis, tracheitis, rhinitis, bronchitis, gastritis, colitis, um, urethritis, urinary tract infections, cystitis, anywhere in the mucous membrane tissue, uterus, if it's irritated, inflamed, or it's feeling like it's dried out and weak and desiccated, atrophied, then marshmallow is excellent medicine. Preferred as a tea, a long, cool steeping. You could use warm water. You definitely don't have to boil it and just let it sit overnight and these polysaccharides will just come out into the medicine, uh, into the water and provide this medicine. You can have this as medicine. You can also add it to uh, larger soups that you might be eating and, and just adding some of this mucilaginous to it. I used to do it with slippery elm, not as much with marshmallow, but I would add it to hot cereals to give it some more texture and make it even more slimy when I felt I needed that. Um, what else do I want to say about marshmallow? Um, oh yeah, the flowers are edible. You can add them as garnishes to salads, make it more festive looking and also get a different texture and taste. Um, the leaves are also edible when younger, but I would uh, be more apt to add them to soups where you don't mind them getting a little goopier, like a gumbo or something. Um, and like I said, because it is a perennial plant and can spread fairly easily, uh, I'm not worried about threatening this species. And also, it's a great way of taking pressure off of slippery elm. If you notice, this is looking a little bit like a hollyhock, and hollyhocks are first cousins to the mallows as well. There's many mallow species. This is the official one, but you would find native species growing up in damp, marshy areas all over the place. And again, it's a really good pollinator attractor, although this time of day, not as much. They seem to be liking other flowers this time of day more. So yeah, marshmallow.